Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and uh, today's video we're going to talk about a new new store procedure that I've been working on uh, to help you uh, get the information you need to reproduce query performance issues. Um, th this this is mostly I, I, again I I, I, write, I I mostly wrote this for myself because I I spend a lot of time doing this sort of thing when I'm working with clients where uh, we'll look at query store and we'll find a query that we want to uh, test out and reproduce but um, getting everything set up in order to uh, to run the query and, and the way that it it, it ran uh, you know uh, when, when it was when it was executed by whatever can be can be kind of a, a pain in the butt so we're gonna we're gonna talk about some of the uh, we're gonna talk about kind of more what it does uh, some of the limitations on things and uh, how you can start using this on, well, I don't know, with whatever you do during the course of your business day. So down in the video description, there are all sorts of things that you can click on that will give me money. Uh, you can hire me for consulting, you can buy my training, you can support this channel and the, the work that I do to bring you all of this SQL Server content. Uh, if you want to ask me office hours questions, that will not give me money, but it will give me joy. And of course, uh, another thing that will, another free thing that will give me joy is, of course, the old like, subscribe, tell a friend. So uh, please be generous, at least with that one. Uh, Past Data Community Summit coming up, Seattle, November 17th to 21st. Kendra Little and I uh, rocking out two days of uh, the finest T SQL precons that have ever been seen. By, by the eyes of humans. So um, you, we have that to look forward to. Um, still waiting for official thing, official like release dates and notes on some other stuff. So this is the slides a little empty at the moment, but hopefully we'll get there soon. And uh, I'm gonna have to change this soon because uh, I mean, I'm recording this and uh, October is almost over. It's just about Halloween. So there's no way this video is getting released before. Uh, uh, October is over, so we'll work on something new. I don't know what it's going to be yet. I'll, I'll figure it out. Anyway, um, wonder if wonder if we could do wonder if we could find a, a Thanksgiving themed one that would be inoffensive. Maybe maybe we'll just try for like winter or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, we'll get there. So. <clears throat> SQL Server Management Studio. So uh, the the store you're gonna have to forgive me. I, I tried to tweak some stuff in in Management Studio to make things a little bit nicer, and uh, some of the um, tooltip things that I have popping up are a little bit out of control at the moment. So uh, you're, you're just gonna have to forgive me that until I restart Management Studio and things calm down. So the the store procedure that I'm working on, that I've been working on is called SP Query Repro Builder. Again, I am awful at naming things. Uh, I'm surprised that Microsoft hasn't hired me to name things given their track record with things like availability groups and things like that. But um, anyway, uh, what this thing does is it, it, it allows you to uh, get uh, look at query store for specific things. I mean, you could look at all of query store, but it probably wouldn't help you. But it probably wouldn't be very useful. It allows you to look at query store for specific things, like maybe a procedure name, maybe some query text. This is built with a lot of the plumbing that Quickie Store has. That's why Quickie Store is actually open over here. I was copying and pasting a lot of stuff around. So uh, what it does is. It allows you to look for things in Query Store, and uh, it gives you an executable query to run to run the query that you want to try to tune. Because normally when you do that, you either have to create a, um, a, a, a temporary store procedure or set up the dynamic SQL to run with parameterized code. And that can be kind of a hassle, especially if you have a lot of parameters and stuff. So what we're, we're going to show you is how it runs under perfect conditions and some of the annoyances that you might run into with your code which I've, I've tried to generate some warnings and exceptions around. So under perfect conditions, if you run this, you get back some results, right? You can see uh, this is very clearly labeled results. And what you get back is, um, well, I mean, the database that the code came from. Uh, this is the executable query. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Uh, the parameter values that were in the uh, XML for the query plan. That's this stuff. Well, it's, it's over there a little bit further. Um, embedded constraints will make a little bit more sense in a moment. Uh, some query ID, plan ID stuff, and then, you know, a little bit of the information that you get back from Quickie Store with regards to, like, weight stats and, um, like, CPU and duration and stuff like that, but uh, the the real the real magic um, comes from 
of course, this executable query column. So I'm just going to crack this open for user. And uh, what, so just clicking this, uh, of course, opens up an XML thing that you can't really do anything with. So what we're going to do is copy and paste out this and paste that in the window here because it makes a lot more sense when the T SQL is like colored and stuff, right? It makes, makes, things, makes life a little bit easier. So uh, we see the query ID and the plan ID. I'll probably end up adding some more information in here later. I just need, I just wanted a little something to get it started. Uh, it, it will use the correct database. It will, um, based on the context settings that are available both in the query plan and in various query store DMVs, uh, set the correct ANSI settings for things to run along with the correct language, date format, and date first stuff. So if you have to deal with um, perhaps um, people who use other languages or other date formats or set date first to other things, it will set all this up for you. And then the next thing that it does is it sets up dynamic SQL to run, right? So here's the query that executed and it sets up the dynamic SQL to run with the parameter and the values that were cached away in the query plan. So this is under perfect, this is under perfect conditions. It'll work for multiple parameters. It'll work for like if, if, if it was actually SP execute SQL and it ran like this, it'll do that too. This just happens to come from a procedure. And if we click on this one here for John, we'll scroll down, we'll see this one was John, the other one was user. So uh, it, it, it tends to line up pretty correctly there. This column is of course, just to kind of help you see if there were any different parameter values that you might want to test stuff out with. This can be particularly useful for, I mean, either like reproducing a regular query performance issue or testing various like, um, maybe a uh, like parameter of sensitivity issues. Where things get annoying is uh, when, well, well, let's just talk through each one. So the first thing that can get annoying is when you use local variables. Because when you use local variables, they show up like parameters, right? If you look at the, the query text for this, it looks like a parameter was sent into this called display name. But if you look at the query plan, if we scroll over here just a tad and we look at the query plan, uh, and we, we, like we won't see, uh, like we'll see this predicate on display name, but we won't have a value for display name over here, right? We don't have like a parameter list thing over here that tells us what the parameters were. So there, there is a warning for that, of course. If you come over here and you click on the executable, it'll say the query text has parameter declarations, but no parameters were found in the XML. Uh, if we move that down a little bit, uh, well, I mean, I, I guess I got a little verbose in here. Um, so, you know, uh, we, I felt like it, I needed to say something useful. So uh, I, I do tell you sort of what the problem is and how to fix it because down here, we will not have a value that we could supply in there. So local variables, first annoyance. Um, this, that warning will show up if there's none or if there's just a mismatch between the number of uh, parameters that look like they showed up in the query text versus the number of parameters that were available in the plan. The second problem that you might run into is if you use option recompile, because when you use option recompile, SQL Server uh, uses what's called the parameter embedding optimization. And the parameter embedding optimization takes all your parameters and turns them into literal values. So uh, if we look at what happened here, well, SQL Server executed this whole thing, and uh, you know we had this whole query thing running, but we didn't like we didn't have values for a lot of these, right? And uh, but we we can find the one uh, constant that was embedded in the plan. So if we look at the query plan itself, right? If we say, hey, query plan, what'd you do? And we look at this index seek, we'll see the number two two six five six here in the seek predicate. So uh, it'll show you the embedded literal value that ended up in there when you use option recompile. And of course, um, there is a warning in here where it uh, talks about the query using recompile. Uh, and so right now the search for the embedded values is limited to um, index seeks and scans, uh, either clustered or non-clustered. There's probably more that I need to expand that to, but just to sort of get things out the door, uh, I limited it to those uh, four things. So clustered index seeks and scans and regular index seeks and scans. But um, so like what, what, what gets crappy here is that like, um, I don't know how to line the values up because they are, I mean, like you might be able to infer some of it based on the data types of things that you see in the embedded constants co column. Um, if there were multiple, it would be a comma separated list. But um, so like you have to do some work to sort of infer which one goes where. 
the other thing that can be annoying is if you have any restricted text in your uh, or restrict like encrypted text from you know passwords whatever um, I just created an uh, I just added encryption to a module here and you'll see that the query text says encrypted text right so uh, there's not really a lot that I can do with that right it's just it just sort of spits that back and says I don't know right uh, like granted the the the, qu the query plan for this one I guess isn't very interesting so. Um, you know, nothing that we can really do that. Hey, there's SQL prompt. Hey, Redgate, let's submit an error report. Uh, the next one that can be annoying is, of course, table variables. We do not need to debug this. That's, look, that's a vestigial example. Uh, but, you know, of course, with either table variables or temp tables, we can't see what values are in there. So, um, like, this, this, this example just shows with um, what, what would be an insert into a table variable. Now, granted, you could take the insert portion out and just say, hey, uh, stick that in there, right? Uh, and it's like, just run the select query without the insert, maybe. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if there were, like, a table variable in the query text, like, as a, like, being selected from or joined to or something like that, then we would not know what values were in the table variable. For this insert, we just don't know the table variable definition. So you have to go hunt that stuff down. Uh, the same thing happens with temp tables, where if we run this, oh, you know what, I forgot to show you the, uh, the warning that comes out of that. So, um, well, uh, query may contain table variables right there. Apparently, there are also four warnings. Apparently, I, I, I need an extra select distinct uh, somewhere because we have too many of those, but we'll fix that later. Again, I just got this thing out the door. Stop yelling at me. Uh, and then the next one would be um, for temp tables, right? So the temp table here, uh, again, it shows a little warning up at the top, and you can see in the query itself, uh, we are selecting from a temp table. We do not know the temp table definition, nor what, um, nor what, uh, what do you call them there? Uh, values ended up in the temp table. So just like we wouldn't know what values ended up in a table variable, we can't infer, I can't tell you that. So you might have to go back to the store procedure itself and uh, figure out how to populate that temp table. But uh, for a whole lot of queries, this will make life a whole lot easier when you just need to quickly get set up and execute something to reproduce a performance issue. Hopefully you find it useful. Um, this is available at my GitHub repo, so code.ericdarling.com. Uh, if you, you know, want to try it out, kick it around, tell me if you find any problems, issues, aside from multiple warning texts showing up sometimes, uh, please do, because, um, you know, I've been testing the heck out of this thing locally on a bunch of different things, and it's been pretty okay so far, but, you know, of course, out in the real world, things tend to get a whole lot messier and sloppier, and you people do terrible things to your SQL servers that I cannot dream of, so... Um, if you find any issues, please do file a bug report. Again, that is at my GitHub repo, code.ericdarling.com. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Of course you did, because you're learning about a brand new store procedure. So uh, happy querying and all that other good stuff. Anyway, thank you.